Hi, Alan Stratton from As What Turns. For a very long time now, I have advocated that all turners learn a simple method to turn a sphere without spending a ton of money on a jig, but to learn to do the basic, very low cost, simple method that is self correcting. Yes, that's what I'll use today, but more details in my other videos. But in this one, I'll turn the sphere. In this case, about four, almost four and a half inches, but but add some more texture and interest to it, and hollow it out so it's nice and light. And it did have some other interesting things with the uh, figure and the burl. But what can you do as a sphere? Yeah, well, this is one example, and I like it. So learn to turn a sphere. I will spare you the preliminary processing of this block of figured cherry. It has some cracks and bark that I will have to deal with later. For now, I need a final pass to ensure that it is true to this axis, then measure the diameter at 4.4 inches. This is the starting point of the octagon method to guide cutting spheres. Then diameter times 0.414 for the octagon side and diameter times 0.293 for the distance between the top and bottom of the cylinder and the corner of an octagon. I have excess wood on the cylinder, so I'll try for an optimum considering the voids and bark. Then lay out the key lines. With a bowl gouge, waste off wood at the top of the cylinder. Then using a skew, make peeling cuts at the cylinder corner point down to form a tenon at the end. I'll spend some time measuring and cutting the tenon. The target is for the diameter to be equal to the octagon side. If I can do this successfully, it will guide the next step. If I overcut, my plan B is to mark the side measure with a pencil. The key is to cut straight, avoiding overcutting into the future sphere. This wood is dry and hard, so this is taking a little longer than I would hope. Then do the same cut on the opposite side. Now to cut a side of the octagon that is at 45 degrees to the top and side using the pencil line on the side and the corner of the mortise on the top. I start out at the corner. As I cut in toward the line and the corner, I try to keep the distance between those and my cut to be the same. This assures the 45 degree line. This is a good practice for starting a cut on the side of a spindle. If I do not start with the flute closed, the gouge skates and cuts away my pencil line. No damage except for again marking the line. Once that 45 degree side is finished, I can waste away most of that tenon, but leave enough to keep the wood mounted. Boy, this wood is dry and tough going. Then, same thing on the other end. Home stretch now, I need pencil marks on the middle of each octagon side. By the way, the turning axis is the center on two opposing sides. Then split the difference between each mark. This guides the next step as I cut away the old corners of the octagon. Technically, this transforms the octagon into a hexadecagon or a decahexagon. I forget which is correct for a 16-side polygon. Finally, by eye, round the wood off into a sphere. Just make sure not to cut too deep. Too much or too far will require more rotations in the next step to perfect the sphere. I decide to fill one of the bark inclusions, scraping out the bark and using ultraviolet curing resin to fill it. This is clear, hard UV resin. I do not know the exact wavelength, if there is one. After a partial fill, I shine a UV light on the resin to partially cure it, then add more resin and cure, repeating the sequence until the void is full. 
Afterwards, take it out into the sunlight for a full cure. I'm liking this UV resin much better than epoxy resin or CA glue for this type of small fill. You may note the nubs left from the original mount as I switch to a cup faceplate. The wood is held firmly to the cup faceplate with the life center. The life center has a rubber stopper drilled to fit and with a penny in the bottom to prevent the point from poking through the rubber. Then carefully cut away the nubs and refine the sphere. I'm using my bull gouge now with a shearing cut. I'm watching the ghost at the top and taking very light cuts. My objective is to not remove the old equator line. Then mark a new equator line and rotate the sphere 90 degrees so that the previous centers are now at the equator. Using a skew as a scraper now, Then mark a new equator line and rotate again for more scraping action. I'm going for a fourth rotation. New line and rotate. With that void I filled, it looks like I need one or two more. This was rough, hard wood. Next, the sanding rotation starting with 80 grit sandpaper. Three rotations with each grit, maybe more with the 80 grit as it's still refining the sphere. The remaining grits each get three rotations to cover the complete sphere, but only remove the scratches from the previous grit. Dust collection and or protection is essential. Now for the fun part. For embellishment, I mark lines to divide the sphere into thirds. Then mark a top and a bottom line out from the axis. Since I will be hollowing the sphere later, I want ample room for my opening. By the way, I have marked three divisions on my cup faceplate to assist. Then position the sphere, aligning one line to one of the faceplate marks and the new equator out just off from the top mark. Mark two guide marks where I want to make cove cuts. Then cut the coves with a quarter inch round nose scraper. These cuts are tricky. They need to be light scraping cuts or else the sphere may jump, ruining the project. The grain and voids are complicating these cuts. Then sand each grove from 120 to 400 grit. Now for a second set of parallel grooves. My pencil lines are light. I search for and mark them again, then align the second sphere third division line to the faceplate. Not strictly required, but I do it anyway and position the new equator near the top mark as I did the first time. Then make the next set of cuts as before, but more carefully as the previous cuts interrupt these cuts. I want to cut these at, to the same depth as the first set. The best way to measure is to inspect the intersections. Again, sand the grooves.
Coming up on the third set of parallel grooves, again align the sphere third division and the top center mark with the new equator. And cut again, even more gently, and sand again. I could stop now, except that my sphere is quite heavy. Let us hollow it. I have set up my DIY donut chuck. This chuck consists of a large faceplate and matching outer ring. I choose a quarter inch hex bolt from an assortment of bolts of various lengths. Three of these bolts cinch the outer ring to the faceplate. By the way, three bolts are easier to cinch uniformly than four. The faceplate has a three-quarter inch hole that will accommodate a variety of fixtures to accommodate different project styles. The outer ring has a mortise to accommodate different diameters of holes again for different projects, from faces to spheres. For now, I'll take it easy on myself and bore out a one and three-quarter inch center hole. I do need to sharpen this portion a bit. For hollowing, I'm starting with a heavy box scraper. With a large hole, the scraper can be angled to scrape out a lot of the interior. After a while, I switch to a round carbide. With this, I hope to smooth out the rough spot left by the scraper. Back and forth to the scraper to get more of the bottom. Finally, a small bent carbide tool to address just inside the hole. After some touch-up sanding with the sanding pad, a bath with walnut oil is perfect for this project. It brightens the wood and brings out the grain. Another bark inclusion left the scene for a second window into the interior. The UV resin is a somewhat translucent window. The lines and hollowing give it a good texture and lighter weight. I could make a lid for it, but I think I will leave this one alone. That would be gilding the lily. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. When you subscribe to my website, my notifications are much more reliable to you than YouTube's. Please tell your friends about my weekly videos. And I do appreciate your comments and questions, but please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. As usual, I'm nagging, but I hope to save your life or at least your eyesight. Once wood flies, not even Superman can dodge fast enough.